<laughs> I'm CK. Today we've got a kit from Movio, uh, or Movio, however you say it. I am terrible at foreign pronunciation. It's my fault. Uh, soldering practice kit. It's got a voltmeter, uh, an ammeter, it's a uh, pulse width modulation signal generator, and multiple power supplies, I think 3 volts and 5 volts, all in one little box. So that sounds kind of fun. The only problem with this is Movio has banned me from posting reviews on Amazon for their products because I told the truth about one of their products once and I guess they didn't like that, but that's their choice. I'm not going to be bitter about it too much. Uh, so let's open this up, see what's inside, and I hope you enjoy the video. Let's see what's in the box. This may replace my little power supply that I keep on my workbench, but maybe not, because if it's only got two uh, voltages, that's not as interesting to me. Let's take this all out. It's a bunch of stuff. Nothing else in the box, so we'll get the box ready for recycling. Here we can see we've got some spacers, some screws, and the plastic case parts. We'll deal with that later. Multifunction instrument production kit is what the label on this bag says. I'm going to dump everything out rudely. I'm going to try it. There's... I'll talk about it in a second. Let me get them all out of the bag first. Don't get ahead of yourself, buddy. It's a good looking circuit board. It's uh, all through hole plated, which is not typical for uh, inexpensive kits like this. So let's see what we've got. We've got uh, something there. I think that's power in. It's a switch here. There's an STC microcontroller here. A bunch of caps. A surface mount transistor looks like. Uh, and then a cup of one big surface mount resistor. That's interesting. Two displays. The values for almost everything are on the board. There's a buzzer. There's uh, something. NTC. We'll figure what that is later. Plus minus. Volt. Amp. Some. Oh, I think these are trimmers. No. No, these are actually uh, screw posts. And V... PWM voltage for pulse width modulation or pulse width modulated voltage. I don't know because it says 3.3 volts on it. And here's another output. So again, I'm just speculating right now. On the back, there's nothing. So these two surface mount parts uh, are going to be, if you've never done surface mount, these two will be uh, a good intro because they're widely spaced pins, and you should be able to do that fine. We'll talk about that more in depth during the assembly process. So we've got all the components and where they go, which is nice, and it's in English, which is appropriate. Note, users can complete the installation according to the PCB silk screen and component list. Yep. Parameters, work voltage, 5 volts. Current 30 milliamps, that's not much. Interface micro USB. It'll put out 1 to 31 kilohertz uh, pulse width mo modulated frequency and uh, uh, 0 to 100 duty cycle. 3.3 volts or 5 volts switchable output frequency. Measure voltage from 0 to 30 volts. Measured current 0 amps to 2 amps. Temp, 0 to 100C, that's pretty high. Uh, no, this is a lot of stuff. Okay, oh, the NTC sensor is for temperature. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, you can get an external NTC sensor 
not included. Okay, that's fine. Let's look at the other side. Multifunctional voltmeter ammeter DIY kit, which does a bunch of stuff. And here's the schematic, which is dandy. And then we've got a man, uh, QR code for the manual. Let's look at the actual parts. Ooh, they gave us a little screwdriver. Ooh, that's nice. USB connector. Let me put that, those in another bin. Here are, there are dual displays here, and there's the socket for the uh, microcontroller, the STC microcontroller, and then in here, I can't really see that because there's a glare on this film that's covering it. So I gotta hack and slash that off to see what it is. It is a LM358P. Uh, I'm not sure what an LM358P is. Let's see if it says. No. I'll look that up in the interval and report back to you when we go live in just a little bit. I mean, when we go to put it together in a little bit live. I'm already live ish. And we've got our resistors, and they have their values printed on the little paper tape, which is thoughtful. Yeah, we got a bunch of screw posts, the ubiquitous buzzer, and we do have a couple of trimmers, I guess, for setting voltage. I'm going to make that assumption. Here are our two, they give us two surface mount resistors, and they are big. I've never seen one in that big a package. And here's the transistor, and over here this probably is a voltage regulator. It's an S8550. I'm not sure what an 8550 is. Oh, just a transistor. Just a transistor. Little clicky switch. And that's a power supply. Another. They have a pin header here, which I think would allow you to program the STC chip if you want. Here we've got it. Oh no, it's not. It's for this jumper that I just picked up. So we're going to be able to select something. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the 5 volt, 3 volt uh, jumper selector. Let's see where that is. Uh, I think it goes right there. Or it could go right here. I don't know. We'll figure that out. So it looks all pretty straightforward. Oh, where's the trans... Where's the thermistor? I can't see the thermistor anywhere. It may be one of these. It could be... That's another transistor. That's a transistor. And this is another transistor. So I don't see, they did say it was not included for the external one, but I thought it had one. This may be it, because I don't think they list any diodes. No, nope, they do. 4007 diode. And that would be that. So that's it, and a couple of electrolytic and uh, disc caps. Looks pretty straightforward to assemble. Again, the surface mount parts might be challenging or new to you, but these are probably the easiest surface mount you're ever going to do. So let's get the soldering iron heated up, and we'll put this thing together. I followed the URL, I mean the QR code, to the build guide. And the build guide basically uh, has the steps. There are no specific pictures of assembly in progress. However, there is a final picture showing where everything is. And then there's a number of pictures uh, that show you how to use it, which is good because it is uh, interesting. This is actually, it's a little funny. They've got usage 
in the middle. Okay, so let me show you. So here we have the text steps to do everything. Here's a final picture showing where everything is. Then we've got here's how to use it. And then we hop back to step one, step two. So there is a complete step-by-step, component-by-component build guide. So that's very good for, obviously, for somebody just starting out. So that's A-OK. -okay. And we're going to do it in the order they say, because why not? And as one might expect, we're going to do the surface mount components first. And we'll do the transistor first, if I can find it. There it is. It's in its little package first. Let me get some of my really thin... I use this 0 0.025 inch diameter wire for surface mount. Let me spool some of that out. It's not really necessary on this project because, again, these solder pads are real big. So what I'm going to do, this is how I do it, I'm going to put a glob of solder on that position and a glob of solder on this resistor position. Let that sit, then I'm going to grab my tweezers. These are my bent tweezers. They're what I use for surface mount components, so I can see what I'm doing easily. And I do have a video on my channel about tweezers and all the varieties that I've found useful. I'll link to it. No, I won't. I'll pretend I'm going to link to it and then completely forget. So, I'm going to move this over here, holding it with my tweezers, making sure the legs are aligned, with the pads, and I'm going to reheat that solder glob I put down. Oops! And I squeezed too hard. Uh, one of the challenges with many of these components is they're beveled on the side, so if you squeeze them too hard, they squirt out. So again, line up the pins, then reheat this solder, solder wad. And you might have seen that. It kind of sunk into it. Now it's not going anywhere, and we'll do the other two legs. I like to put the soldering iron beside it, and then flow solder into them. That's one leg. It's the second leg and the third leg. They're all good, and I'm going to put a little mo more solder over here. There we go. And then we'll get our resistor. Again, these are huge surface mount resistors. I don't even know what size these are. Because I've I never use resistors that are this big. Gonna just dump it out. And basically the same as we just did on the tra oops. On the transistor. I'm gonna heat that little solder pool up again. Get it flowing then slide the resistor into it, kind of spoon up some of the solder, so that is on very securely also. And we'll fill in the gap. And just double this up a little bit, just because. And there, quick and easy surface mount soldering. Would be a wonderful thing to do first.
Now we're going to put all the resistors on. We're going to start with the uh, 1Ks. Got five of those. And I will do one of them first. Again, this board has all through hole plated component placement holes, which is excellent. Again, it's not something that you always get on some of these less expensive kits. And I'm going to keep using that thin solder until it runs out. So let's see. We'll go ahead and see how it takes solder. All perfect. And if you look closely, hopefully it'll focus, you can see the fo solder flowed through the plated hole, completely surrounding the leads, which is what you want. And we've got about mm, 13, 14 resistors left. And there's nothing more to say about them than what I just did say. So I will mute the volume, put the video in fast playback, and probably cut some of it out. But that allows you to enjoy resistor time. We're done with resistor time, and they also gave us basically one extra of each resistor type. Now we're going to do the USB micro socket, and that is pretty much, it's kind of surface mounty, but not really because you don't have to mess with tweezers or whatever, so we can just solder it on. Right there, and don't skimp on the solder on this because the solder is what's providing the mechanical strength when you're plugging and unplugging your USB cable. So make sure you also get the little support tabs on the back here soldered in place. Now we'll put the IC sockets on. Oh, by the way, I did not look up this LM358. Uh, Let me do that right now. And it is a, oh, it's a little op amp, dual op amp. Okay. Now we know what that is. So let me go back to the instructions just so I'm going in the, oh, going in the same order that they have. Oh, I skipped something, did I? I did, I skipped something. I apologize. So we're not going to put the sockets on yet. We're, we are going to put this, uh, it's what I thought it was. This is the thermistor, this little pink cylinder with a break in the middle of it. So it's a temperature sensor and it's going to go in R12 and they want the sensor probed at least five millimeters away from the edge of the PCB. So that's what we will do. We'll bring it in to about there. Let me get my scale out. It's about five millimeters. So I'll just spread the things out because I thought there was something else. Yeah, there's also a diode we have to put on. I apologized, I jumped ahead. Got all excited. It's got a silver stripe, which goes with the white stripe on the circuit board. And this is a 4007, which is generally used as polarity protection for input power. Now I'll do the socket. So we'll take the big socket for the microcontroller and as you can see there's a notch on the circuit board printing and there's a notch on the socket and they go together and what I like to do is rest it on my 
pinky finger behind the circuit board, solder one pin. Now take a look and you might notice there it's a little bit raised up so I just press it with my index finger, reheat that solder and it goes flat to the board. So I'm going to go ahead and solder all of these things. Now I'll do the other little socket for the op amp. And if you're interested in how this works and you're looking at the schematic, one thing you'll also notice is that these traces are really easy to see. So you can follow the schematic pretty easily. It is dual layer board, so you got to look at the front and the back. But, and now we're going to put the socket, this socket, and I believe this is power. Oh no, this is the external temp sensor. And it's got a notch, and the notch faces towards the board, not away from the board. Let's see, are we going to do all of those? No, we're not. Just mumbling to myself. And then we'll put the LED on it. And let me get my little LED buddy out. And I built this a uh, while ago. It's a really good tool. I may post a link. If I forget, just search for LED buddy. And we just touch the leads there. Lights up the LED, tells you it takes 2 volts to forward voltage to turn it on. Draw on 26 milliamps at 5 volts and takes a 120 ohm resistor as a current limiter. Very handy device, just if all you simply want to do is see if an LED is working. Now there's a great plus sign on the board here that tells you where the long lead goes. And I'm going to solder this right now because I want it to be flat on the board. So I will do the same technique that I did for the socket. I'm going to do one lead and pick it up. Oh, it actually went pretty flat, but just push on it with my index finger behind the board and it moved a little bit, so now it's even flatter than it was before. Now we're going to do the 104 ceramic caps, 100 nanofarad ceramic caps. When you encounter these 104s on a circuit that has integrated circuits like the op amp or the microprocessor, the 104s very likely tenth of a microfarad. They will go right next to or very close to the chips to condition the power going to the chips. You can read or research online about decoupling caps and integrated circuits and you'll see what that's all about. And we're going to put the switch on. I believe it goes here. Yes, because it's called switch one. And that's, huh. The picture shows a switch with angled contacts, so it would go out that way. That's not what we have. We have a straight up and down switch. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to hold off putting this on until we get the case out and start seeing what we can do there because if this has to, if this can only push out the side of the case, then I'm going to have to be creative about how we put that on. I'm surprised they did that. But uh, we'll see when we get to that. I've got to recycle the cameras because their battery is going dead on the top one. Batteries are swapped. We're back in operation. Now we're going to put the three pin here. Now 
Now we'll put the three transistors in. Again, I think these are all the same 8050s, but I will double check each of them just because you don't want to make a mistake. And of course, the flat side of the transistor faces the flat side printed on the circuit board. I'll solder those next time we flip the board over. Note that this transistor faces, the flat side faces that way. These three, the fat, flat side faces this way, so don't, don't get one of them wrong. Now we'll put the electrolytic, the 10 microfarad electrolytic cap. Where does that go? It goes somewhere. Oh, here. And there's a plus sign here. It's a little bit obscured, but there's a plus sign indicating which way the which hole the long lead goes into. And we'll do one more thing before we solder back again. We'll put the buzzer on, and that is polarized too, so there's the plus sign right there. And as you can see on this plastic cover, I mean paper cover, there's a plus sign telling you how to install this, but these leads got bent in shipment. And that's that. I'm going to pull the paper off this now because we're not going to be washing the board because we're not in a production environment. Okay, now we're going to put our little connector posts in. And that's on. Now we'll put the power socket. And for USB power, I believe we can put USB power into this. And it's keyed so it would be difficult to get in wrong. And again, oh, yeah, that's fine, that'll support it. And again, don't skimp on the solder on this because as you push and pull the power connector, this solder is what's holding it in place. Then we've got the button switch, push button switch that goes here. And now we'll put the two trim pots on, and they have screws to adjust the resistance. And if you can see on the board, there's a little screw mark on the board so you know how to install those. And now, we will take our LEDs displays and install those. As you can see, there are decimal point dots, and there are decimal point dots on the silk screening to tell you how these are oriented. I think I can do both of them at the same time. Get my index card again. No, I can't because this is too high. Uh, okay, I will hold them on the back as before. And do one leg of each. And double check that they're flat. And they are indeed flat, so I'll solder the rest of the pins. And now we'll install the chips. Take it out of the foam. Bend the pins in a little bit against the side of my workbench. Now again, we're going to match the notch on the chip with the notch in the socket and the notch printed on the circuit board. It all went in, no pins bent. Now we'll do the op amp. 
and they go in just fine. And they've got, uh, I'll do that in a little bit. So that's all the soldering on the board. So since that's all the soldering, I'm going to take my index card and run down all the solder points to make sure I've got everything. I'm missing something here, which is another capacitor. I did not see that other capacitor. That's why I do what I just did. And now we've got everything on the board, except for the toggle switch, which, as I said, I've got to get the case out and see how that may, how I may be able to make that go in well. I'm going to peel all the plastic film, I mean protective film off them. Speaking of protective film, I'm going to pull the protective film off these LEDs. And that's the way it looks. And I will be back after I peel all the protective coating off the case parts. Protective film off the case. And did find that, yeah, they do expect this switch to go out the side. And again, I can't do that because even if I were to bend these, oh, these leads over, they're not long enough for me to actually get a grip or get them into the solder socket, I mean uh, solder holes. So what I'm going to do instead, I just cut three pieces of wire and I'm going to kind of hang it out the side. So I'm going to solder these pieces of wire onto the switch. Then what I'm going to do after I've got it soldered to the switch, let me look and see what that side panel looks like. Yeah. So I'm going to feed the wires through here and just have it hanging out the side. Now I do want to make my wires in the right order to put them in here. So it's kind of a horrible hack, but just for demonstration purposes. Now we'll go back to the build guide already in progress. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the spacers. And we're going to put them together like this. Now we're going to put the base plate on. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use screws through the bottom into those brass spacers. Get a screwdriver. And we've got one piece that's got the little cutout for the thyristor, which I didn't put the le wait put the legs close enough to the body. So let me squish it out a little bit more because the hole is not big enough unless you squish the leads together. There now the temperature sensor is outside of the case. And we're going to put this one over he here, where it interlocks. Well, they don't really interlock yet, but it will interlock. Let me get this thing in here. There we go. And this one goes here 
and it interferes with the power connector. There we go. That slid it in. And we'll get this one, which has a little hole for the button. But it's the other way around. Now we've got one final thing here, which keeps the access to the wire connectors. And now we will put the top on, making sure all the tabs on our side pieces catch in the right holes, and they do. That's a little bit tight fitting too. And that's what we got. And the jumper goes in here. I'm going to put it in, connect it here for right now. I think that's 5 volts. I'm not certain. So I'm going to get another piece of wire. Oh, let me recycle the cameras and get another piece of wire and get my power supply set up. Okay, let's give this a little bit of a test. Oh, one, I did two things. I connected the uh, alligator clamps to the wire they provided, also put a wire in there. And they also gave us a little button cap for this switch, so I'm going to put that on right now. I don't think it's really necessary, but it's completeness. Now, let me make sure this switch is off. Plug it in, and turn the switch on. Okay, we got a LED showing operation. We got blank values for voltage and current. And uh, yeah, I've got the scope up because we're going to use the pulse width modulation thing first. So let me go to my instructions just to see. Measure voltage and current values. So I'm in volts and ground. I'm not going to do current today because uh, I don't feel like it and it's if one thing works everything works. So I'm gonna get this 9 volt battery which I know, let's see, let's look on the fluke first and see what the fluke thinks the voltage is. Let me move things around a little bit so you can see that. And negative I'm getting there. Negative and positive, and the fluke is showing 4.88 volts. Okay. That's reasonable. It's a battery that's been out in the shop a while. So, black wire to the negative, red wire to the positive, and 4.86. I can't ask for better than that. That's the fluke was shown 4.88. This is fine, and of course it's dropping because it's probably discharging as I'm doing that. So voltmeter setting works fine. Then we've got temperature, one point, I mean one sixteen C, and then uh, this display would be for our external, which I am not connecting. So, but let's see. If I put my finger on there, we can see the temperature climbing up, which is great. And now it'll drop off again, so that works fine. This is logic, logic. This is just showing if uh, there's an on signal coming into these, these two terminals here. I don't really care about that. Then here, I think that's the PWM page. No, this is the PWM page. What was that page? Uh, oh, that was circuit on off. Again, same thing as the low high. It's just showing whether uh, there's power to it. Okay, so we can measure input PWM. That was the screen we were going to say before, see before, but we're going to actually uh, just do the output pulse width modulation signal because I don't have anything to feed PWM to that uh, handy. I had that one kit, but I overpowered it to 35 volt, volts and blew it up. 
So if we look at the scope, I have to change. Oh, if we look at the scope, you can see we've got some pulsing going on. Uh, I've got it set, as you can see, at 250 kilohertz and 40% duty cycle. Let me ratchet the. Oh, you can see I'm ratcheting it up. Let me take it up to 500. You can see on the scope that it is getting faster. I may even have to adjust the scope settings here in a minute. So I've got that set on 500. That's what it's showing. And the scope is saying it's 498.4 hertz, uh, kilohertz, which is fine deviation. We've got 40% duty cycle, so the on time is 40% of the total pulse width. So I'm going to change the duty cycle. Let's go up to, that's 50, let's go up to 75. And you can see the gap between, the off gap is much narrower now. I could go all the way up to 100%, I think. And we shouldn't see a gap between pulses at all. Okay, that's 100%, and it's a flat line. Exactly what I would expect. So, it works. Pretty easy to use. And as you saw, except for this, this silly switch, which they gave us the wrong one, because it doesn't, it doesn't have angled leads, uh, went together just fine would be a good handy little unit to have maybe on your a remote area where you don't want to drag your meter over to all the time. But in general, it's a fine little unit. And I hope you enjoyed the video.